Greetings friends, David Marks here with another video tutorial on the ever-improving Adobe Lightroom CC for mobile app. In today's tutorial, I'm going to explain how to use the graduated filter and the radial filter tools inside of Lightroom CC for mobile version 3. Two quick warnings before we get started. First, if you're using the free version of the Lightroom CC app on your mobile device, then sadly, you will not be able to play along today. These selective editing tools are unfortunately only available to those who pay monthly for an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. Second, I'm gonna assume in this video that you already understand image editing fundamentals using Lightroom. If you're new to the whole Lightroom ecosystem, then please take the time to learn the basics before you jump into this tutorial. Without further ado then, let me switch over to my iPad and let's get rolling. I've picked out three images for today's demo that should demonstrate the most common uses for the graduated and the radial filter tools. To get started, I'm gonna tap with one finger on this image that I shot at sunrise in the beautiful Swiss Alps. With that single finger tap, we've entered Adobe Lightroom CC for mobile's image editing workspace. As I'm sure you know by now, these panes and buttons along the right-hand side of the screen contain almost all of the features that we're used to using inside of Lightroom Classic. Here in the light panel, for example, are all the sliders that folks like me are used to seeing in Classic's basic panel. As you can see, I've done some work in here already to get this image tuned up for today's video. I wanna make it clear that you need to fix up the whole image before you start working with the selective tools, which are the subject of this tutorial. I'm happy with the overall image right now, but for comparison, let me show you the unaltered original RAW file. This is what my camera saw on this particular morning. And this is with my global adjustments. It's definitely better, but right now that sky lacks color and drama. Well, to fix that, I'm gonna tap here on this round circle with a gray center, which represents all of the selective tools inside of Lightroom CC for mobile. Next, I'm gonna tap on the plus sign in the top left to bring out the Selective Tools menu. Now, I need to tap on the Graduated Filter symbol, which is the one on the far right side of this little blue bar. With that Graduated Filter tool active, I'm gonna tap on my screen with one finger right here, just above the mountains. With this tap, I'm telling Lightroom CC to create a new Graduated Filter edit and to put the center of the filter's transition zone right here. That red overlay that you're seeing is Lightroom's way of telling you which side of the image it will alter by whatever changes that we make at this point. Now, to be clear, Lightroom is not identifying or selecting the sky in this photo. This red overlay is simply telling us that everything above that midline is the zone that will be the most affected by the changes that we're about to make. And everything below the bottom line will be unaltered by whatever we do with this tool. If I wanted to, I could reposition this filter by dragging the blue pin around the screen with one finger. Likewise, I could flip this filter over too so that it would alter the bottom edge of this image rather than the top by pressing and holding one finger along the middle line and then rotating things around. That's not what I want to do for this image, so I'm going to undo that rotation, but you get the idea. Finally, I can increase or decrease the size of the transition zone by dragging out from either the top or the bottom line here. For this demo, I'm going to set a transition zone like this, and I'm going to reposition the midpoint so that this graduated filter barely overlaps the top edge of those mountain peaks. With things set this way, I've told Lightroom where I want my changes to happen, but I've not yet told this amazing app what kind of changes to make. To do that, I'm gonna open up the panels one by one on the right-hand side of the screen, and then I'm gonna tap on a couple of my favorite sliders. That looks much better. Let me show you a before and after here so you can really see what a big difference this additional graduated filter edit makes on that sky. That's without our graduated filter, and that's with. Awesome. Let's do another, because for a landscape photographer like me, this is such a wonderful tool. This time, 
Let me show you more of the start to finish pattern that I actually follow when tuning up my images. To get things started, I always begin my editing these days in the new profile browser pane. For this image, I think that the new Adobe Landscape profile is an excellent starting point. Next, I'm going to tap on the new AI based auto button and let Lightroom set my tone sliders for me. Overall, I think auto nailed it here, but I'm going to make these shadows a little bit brighter still. Back here in the color tab, I'm going to nudge the temp up just a little to make this image even warmer. Now, I could keep working away here with a lot more precision, but by now you get the idea. So to keep things moving, let's pretend that I went down there and controlled the sharpening using the details panel. And then I went and fine tuned the color using the HSL control and so on and so on. Let's pretend that I did that. And so now let's say that we're ready for those selective tools. Well, to pull them up again, I'll tap here. Then I'll tap on the plus. Then I'll tap on the graduated filter symbol. Now that I have this tool active, I'm going to tap to create my graduated filter. And then I'm going to drag down to create a longer transition zone. I'll reposition things too if needed. Next, I'm going to turn off the red overlay with a tap on the blue pinhead. By the way, if you press and hold one finger on the blue pinhead long enough, then an options menu will appear where you can access other features. Right now, I don't need any of these, so I'll tap outside of the photo to make this menu disappear. What I need to improve this image at this point is to go over to the light panel and drop the exposure down a little. While I'm in here, I'm also going to up the contrast. And I think I'll add a little dehaze. Finally, I'm going to bounce back up to the color tab and add just a little bit more blue. That looks good. So now I'm going to tap on the done button in the bottom right corner. To see this image with and without the graduated filter, I'm going to tap on the undo and redo arrows up here at the top a few times. That's without our graduated filter. That's with. Without. With. Excellent. Okay. Let's do one more, but this time let's work on a portrait. To keep things moving, I've already tuned up the overall image. This one's of my nephew. And now I'm ready to add emphasis to his face. Unlike the landscape images that I was using in the previous examples, a graduated filter is not going to do us any good here. Instead, we're going to use the radial filter to brighten up this kid's adorable face without changing the rest of the image. To do that, I'm going to tap on the Selective Edits button again. Then I'm going to tap on the plus. But this time, I'm going to tap on the circular symbol in the middle. With the radial filter active, now I'm going to tap right on top of my subject's face. At this point, I can expand or contract the area that this radial filter will alter by dragging away from any of the white handles along the white ring. Unlike the graduated filter, the radial filter features an inverse option. This option makes sense as long as you remember that the red overlay here represents the area that this edit will affect. With things set up like this, I would be changing everything but my nephew's face. And with things like this, it's working inside the circle, thus brightening his face up and not affecting the rest of the photo, which in this case, is exactly what I want. So now that I have our filter properly positioned, I'm going to go to the light tab and set the exposure to say plus two. I think I'll bring the highlights up a bit and the shadows. Finally, I think I'll adjust the clarity just a little. Okay, now I'm done. Now, these adjustments are way stronger than this image actually needs, but I set them up this way to demonstrate one important control. If I zoom in here using the two finger pinch move, can you see a weird hard edge circle around my nephew's face? 
this weird hard edge spotlight effect is happening because right now the feathering on this radial filter is set all the way to zero. To keep our changes from creating this kind of unnatural edge, we want to use some feathering. Think of feathering like the length of the transition zone that we had a minute ago with the graduated filter. To up the feathering, I'm going to press and hold one finger here on this round button. Now, with my finger pressed against this button, I can swipe up to soften that transition zone and to take away that unnatural hard edge. There, that looks much better. Okay, one last trick. If you want to take a portrait like this one even further, then you might consider adding a second radio filter to create a subtle vignette kind of effect around your subject's face. With the selective tool active, if I was to tap on that little gray dot above his eye, I would be opening up the filter that we put down just a minute ago. And that'd be great if I wanted to modify what we've done there. But to create this vignette, I need a second radial filter layer. So I want to just tap to create a new one of these. Now I'll expand the zone so it fits about where I want it. Only in this case, I don't want to change my nephew's face again. I want to change everything else. So I need to tap on the inverse button so that the red overlay covers most of the photo and not his face. Now I'll make sure that I have plenty of feathering. That looks pretty good. And then I'll open up the panels on the right and set things this way. Let's bring the exposure down just a smidgen. Let's bring the contrast down just a little. Bring the highlights down. Bring the shadows down. Let's bring the saturation down. And finally the clarity. Okay, that looks good. I think I'll hit done. Now we have one radial filter that brightens up his face and another that draws a little brightness and saturation away from the rest of the image. The results, I hope, are a much stronger portrait than what my camera originally recorded. Well, I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Using these tools takes a bit of practice, but the results are totally worth it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.